Douglas Andrew is a best-selling author of Personal Finance Guides and president of Paramount Financial Services. His new book, Last Chance Millionaire, outlines a fast track to retirement. I think a lot of people think that a uh, two or three hundred thousand dollar retirement nest egg is going to cut it. If you only have two or three hundred thousand dollars and if it's earning maybe six percent, which is the average return in the country, and you're withdrawing the amount of money that most people earn, you're going to be totally out of money by, uh, by the sixth or seventh, eighth year of retirement. Mm -hmm. You need a million dollars in a nest egg earning six or seven percent tax advantage so that you will not outlive your money. Okay, so the number one thing you're saying is that it's not too late to become a millionaire. Why? Because a lot of people think that if they've procrastinated or been consuming too much money that it's too late to become wealthy. And when they go down that home stretch, uh, in Utah where I'm from, we have ski resorts and the last run of the day is when most people get injured because they're, they're taking unnecessary risks. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do that. It's not too late to become wealthy safely and having the right investments that, that will help you achieve your goals in just a short 10 or 15 year period so you won't outlive your money. What would you say some of your top strategies are? One of the number one strategies, Christine, that I have been advising clients for years is to take those lazy idle dollars trapped in their house because houses were made to house families not to store cash. The home is what's sacred, not the house. Mm -hmm. And if you will uh, reposition those lazy idle dollars and become your own banker, you can actually accumulate an extra $1.3 million for your retirement resources by doing what banks and credit unions do, borrowing at a lower rate and investing that money conservatively to a higher rate. So let me go back to that for just a second. The bottom line is you think that people are sitting on their nest eggs in their home equity? That is right. Explain that a little bit more. See, most boomers uh, have only about $50,000 accumulated that is earmarked for retirement. And there's 80 million baby boomers approaching retirement. But you know, Christine, the average boomer has a house worth about $300,000 and about $150,000 of equity in that home. Mm -hmm. And I prove in The Last Chance Millionaire that if you use that resource, it, it's sitting under your own roof, and you separate that equity, let's say at 6% or 7% tax deductible, mm -hmm. and you put that to work at 6 7 or 8% compounding tax-free, you can do that safely and over a 10 or 15 year period end up with an extra 500000 or even a million dollars that you can use for your retirement. For boomers and especially with what's going on in the market right now, this is kind of scary, don't you think? That is right. And you know, Christine, sometimes it's, it's the view from where you sit that makes you fear defeat. So life is full of many aisles, so why don't you change your seat? Mm -hmm. So what I tell people to do is to view their home really as a safe abode where they live in, but if you can separate those dollars and put them to work, you're actually going to have greater safety and peace of mind. You'll sleep better at night when you understand these concepts. For example, uh, a couple of years ago in Hurricane Katrina, if you were relocated to Baton Rouge or Houston, Texas, wondering when you could go back home and all of a sudden the levee breaks and you watch the news and the floodwaters up to your, your roof line, at, at that moment, do you wish your home was paid off? Or do you wish your equity was removed where with a phone call or an elect electronic funds transfer, you could access fifty or $100,000? So this requires a major shift in thinking for the boomer generation to really start sprinting with your home equity, right? That's right. Putting money in IRAs and 401ks, traditional retirement accounts, may be a good way to go. But if you're putting money in those types of accounts thinking you're going to be in a lower tax bracket when you retire and also sending extra principal payments to the mortgage company, that's like going down the highway with one foot on the gas pedal and the other foot on the brake pedal because you're killing your best partner, Uncle Sam, in the process. Mm -hmm. If you can... Um, Remove that home equity and put it to work. You increase the liquidity, the safety, and the rate of return. Also, you can withdraw up to $60,000 a year out of your IRAs or 401ks with no tax because you're creating new mortgage interest offsets because it's deductible when you separate the equity, especially if you buy a new property and establish a new acquisition indebtedness. For the boomer or maybe even someone just a little bit younger, what's the first step to get going fast? In order to really begin sprinting toward retirement, you need to sit down and assess your situation and what resources you have. Most Americans accumulate most of their money, Christine, in two places, their house and their retirement accounts. And they don't do a very good job with either one of those. Like I said, they're going down the hi highway off times with one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas. I would recommend that you set up a plan, a home equity retirement plan, where you begin to separate the equity every three or four years. Every time I refinance my home, and I do it as often as every two or three years, I get on track 
to have enough money in my right-hand pocket to pay off the mortgage in the left-hand pocket faster than with the older lower mortgage. But I never physically pay off my house because when I have enough money in this pocket to pay off the mortgage, I am out of debt. Mm -hmm. But by continuing to become your own banker, you'll accumulate, as I prove in the book, maybe two or three million extra dollars by learning how to manage equity properly from the word go.